each other into the house of God. If you can find somebody uh, into this place, if you want to greet them, uh, feel free to exercise their social distancing as we begin our service. I uh, welcome you into the house of God. Just we expect the spirit of God in this place. Upon us, and we're just so grateful that there are other churches not able to meet and not able to have this luxury. So we, we take advantage of it. Jesus. Amen, amen. Let's just enter into prayer at this time. Hallelujah. If you can just bow your heads and lift your hands in this place. Hallelujah. Let's say, would you give it all to me? Give it all to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. How wonderful, Lord, are your gifts to you, God. Hallelujah, how good they are, God. Praise the Lord because he guides me night of my conscience warns me. I'm always aware of the Lord's presence. He is near. Nothing can shake me. So I am thankful and glad and I feel completely secure because you protect me from the power of death. I have served you faithfully. You will not abandon me to the world of the dead. Hallelujah, you will show me the paths that lead to life. Your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. Hallelujah, Lord, we leave, oh God, in this place. That's it. Lift your hands. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah, let your expression be known. Let your expression be known unto him right now. In Jesus' name, we worship you, Lord God. We give you praise. That's it. Hallelujah, Lord. Where is that praise coming from? How is it coming from a place of grace? Is it coming from a place of gratitude? Hallelujah, Lord God. I want to trace my words back to a place of gratitude. I want to trace my praise back to a place of joy, God. Hallelujah. A place of redemption, a place of salvation.
just want you. Is there a hunger that comes from within it says, we just want you. 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 You fill me with joy, God. Hey, we just want you. Yes, we do, God. We just want you. We just want you. We just want you. Help me sing, take everything. Take everything. I don't want it. I don't need it. So take me, yeah. take me, I'm yours, take me, I'm yours, we just want you, we just want you, we just want you, help us sing it out, take me, I'm yours, take me, take me, take me, I'm yours, just want you, just want you, I just want you, we just want you. Let's offer up a sweet incense to him right now. Hallelujah. Yes, that's yes. it. That's it. I wonder if you could lay aside every weight right now. Lay aside every weight, every distraction right now in your mind. I wonder if he's worth it right now for us to focus on him right now. I wonder if he's that valuable right now for you to lay aside that weight. Hallelujah, Lord God. I choose right now to lay aside the weights of the world, God. I choose right now to make you my focus. Lord, and say with my mouth, Lord, with my body, God, I just... better than that. Let's worship him in this place. Hallelujah. Let's worship him in this place. Just for you. Just for you. Collectively, are able to praise Him. Yes, you worship with us. Yes. Worship with us as we sing. Yes.
three days that something God wants to do in my spirit it's an expectation of worship come on that's it I said it's an expectation that in the next three days something will be deposited into my spirit that will have an impact on the holiness, repentance, and intimacy with our God. God, I can feel it in the air. Hallelujah. 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 As you remain standing, we're going to do our offering and ask the preacher to come. But I thought as they were doing that song, you know, when Jesus was surrounded by evil, oppression, and they wanted to know his identity in darkness and said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth in the Garden of Gethsemane. You remember what he said? I what? Am he. What happened to the soldiers? So when hell is questioning your identity in darkness, holiness pushes the enemy back. Uh, would you just put up, we're going to just, we're going to worship our way to, to offering. Come on up here. Would you just put up that verse I got there, Second Chronicles 20? Just give me a minute. We got to do offering here. Just give me a minute here. The preacher's ready to roll here. Would you read this with me? And when he had consulted with the people, he had appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should be depressed and discouraged. Praise the beauty of what? Holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord, his mercies endureth forever. I'd like to release that for just a moment. Did you know the Greek word for holy? The Greek word for holy is hagios. It means the likeness or the nature of God. And it is the source of all intimate love. 
holiness. The Hebrew word kadosh means the exact opposite from something that is common. And so if you combine both words together, you have for holiness the likeness and nature of Jesus emanating through us as a spirit that has the exact opposite of anything that is common, emanating through us. And so the worship for just a moment, this emanating, is attracting revelation. He wants to deposit by the preach word in this corporate, what I call, army of holiness. Would you turn to someone and say, you are an army of holiness? All right, one verse, and then we want to worship for offering. Psalms 91, would you put that up? I think I put, would you read this with me? Lord God Almighty, you are the God who takes vengeance on your enemies. It's time for you to punish evil. Let your rays of revelation light shine from your people and pierce the conscience of the wicked and punishing them. Where are the rays coming from? His people. Where revelations come from? His people. That's the holiness God is saying. If you'll just for a moment lift your voice again. We're asking for uh, a, a, a illumination of holiness by your worship and your praise. That through us, he said, I'm going to attack anything that messes with you and I am going to protect anything that messes with you, but I'm also going to release some revelation rays to, for punishment. Oh, I wish you could believe that as you lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Come on, that's my offering tonight. Come on. I know we're coming to hear Sister Cobb, but you didn't come here for an all-star preacher. You came here to participate and to become a part of the illumination, the holiness. That Come on, those of you at home watching this, in the name of Jesus, lift your voice. The atmosphere changes. Your thought processes changes. Why are we doing this? We are preparing our attitudes for the illumination of his word. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. I praise him. We are going to take up our offering at this time. And, um, <laughs> um, uh, and Sister Cobb does not have to be here. In fact, very humbly honored to say this is her first uh, place she's preached since COVID-19. And we're, we're very honored for that. <clears throat> and I don't want to go into a lot of details, but she's here by sacrifice. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm doing things completely different. We, uh, in fact, when you take the offering up, brethren, bring the baskets back so that if you want to give afterwards, you can. But this is one of our own. She has ministered to many of you. She's counseled many of you. And so the life she lives is stronger than the message she preaches behind this pulpit. And I hope that you take that in mind as we, I'm not going to take pledges, but we could use some $500 pledges. We can use some $200 pledges, but we just, we, I want her to go, I want her to go home blessed that she has poured her heart out, taken risks to get on a plane. Some of you won't even do that. And she's come here to do that with us here. So would you lift your voice? We thank you for this offering. God, we give in holiness giving. Holiness giving is not cheapskate giving. I give because of your goodness. We praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, would you come giving unto the Lord? Amen. And you can give online, but let's 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 be sensitive to what God wants to do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Good to see Sister Mickey tonight. She has a tremendous testimony of what God has been doing for her and coming into the church. So good to see all of you. You know, I did not purposely advertise this. <clears throat> I really felt like what Sister Cobb had to say was for, for this church. Tomorrow, uh, the ladies only will be ministering at 5 o'clock here. Ladies only. Man, you, you, you guys should have said hoorah or something. I mean, that's a, that's a good thing, huh, guys? Ladies? Amen. And then 1230 Sunday. They'll be here in the sanctuary uh, with Sister Cobb. Thank you for coming out, honoring the word of the Lord here tonight. Would you greet her? I need a new mic head here in Jesus' name.
Thank you. It's an absolute honor to be here. You may be seated. I am absolutely amazed. I have had two of the most glorious time with the Lord yesterday and today. I was in a prayer meeting today that I haven't been in one like that for years. It was unbelievable what God did. Yesterday I got to be with Mama Rogers and um, Sister Alexis came over to talk with me and in the talk and she asked me a very a question and I said I'm going to show you how I pray sometime and I, I put the music on and the tears began Mama Rogers began to just speak in tongues I, I looked at Alexis and her head is like this and just God just walked in the room I'm telling you I, I just want to thank God pastor for allowing her to just spend that little time with me and I, Mama um, Rogers picked me up in Chicago on Wednesday, and we've been worshiping ever since. It's been absolutely, oh, and today, Sister Dyson, didn't God show up? Wow, I'm not here to tickle you tonight. I really am not here. I, um, on the 15th of March, I was in Europe, and um President Trump said that if those that are in England does not get back to the United States by midnight, Monday the 16th, that's it. And I was one of those in Europe. Um, you thought it was bad here? I have never seen anything like it in what, what I saw in Europe. But the Lord worked it out. The Lord had given me a word for the people in London that Sunday. We didn't realize that in the service there were 10 people who already had picked up the COVID-19. And when I walked in, the Lord said to me, don't hug anybody. And it's my home church, so many were getting offended. The Lord said, nip it in the bud right now. And you tell them, when, I st when the devil took me up to the pinnacle and said to jump off, I didn't jump off, even though I know I could. So I am not, I'm using wisdom here. My husband's asked me to use wisdom. Whenever flu season, my husband always did the elbow. And people laughed at him, but now they ain't laughing. Are they? So I'm going to elbow you. I am not, my husband's asked that I do not hug anyone. Not because I don't love you, but we're using wisdom. Am I afraid of COVID? I promise you, if I was afraid of COVID, I would never have gotten on that plane from England. It was packed. We were in, we were in customs in immigration for two hours. And we were, and this man was sneezing and he's rocking. Oh, Lord. It's like, Lord, protect me. It was crazy, crazy. But we, I made it back to the United States and I, I thank God for that. I did thank God for being in England. I am not afraid of this season. I feel it's one of the most glorious seasons I've ever been in. Really. It's really. I'm not afraid of COVID, but neither am I foolish. There is wisdom. There is wisdom. I told them in England, because I know God's going to protect me, I won't run out in the middle of a 90 mile on the freeway traffic, okay? Neither will I step off a 16-tower block and jump, right? Okay, so let's be wise here in everything. Thank you, Pastor, for having me. Thank you, Sister Rogers, for also being taking me out to eat and all that. Thank you, Sister Carpenter, for making that basket up. Beautiful. It's, I can actually travel with it. It's made with some material. Thank you. Thank you, Sister, um, Sister Dyson, for spending some time with me today. I want to thank Alexis back there that spent some time with me. I do not take this lightly. It's an honor. It really is. You think it's an honor for you to be. I think it's an honor for me to be with you all. Pastor um, Rogers has always received me. It's good to see pa a brother and sister Cruz also. In fact, it's good to see every one of you. Every one of you. I have watched some of your services online, actually. Where's Brother Brian? Oh, okay. I watched all those little things. And um, the girls that are in charge of that Sunday school deal, that you guys, you were dancing to the music. You were too. And I was watching it. So, Sister Cece, you did the, the plant thing with little Leah. I watched that too. Yes, yes. I've been home. This is the longest that I can remember in 
since I've been traveling for over 20 years that I've ever been in my house. My husband looked at me last week and he said, I like you being home. And then I had to drop the bomb. He said, you're leaving on Wednesday? I said, yes. He said, but you're coming back before the weekend, right? I said, no, I'm not. So my poor husband is missing me. Amen, amen, yeah. God, it's been a great time. But you know the greatest thing of COVID I love? I've never had so many revelations from God. Unbelievable. Can you believe me here? It's not that God is not speaking. He's speaking all the time. He is. The thing about it is uh, we are so busy. You, all you simply have to do is ask him, train my ear to hear your word. And we're not to get off online. You must use the Bible is your guide because you can be listening and there's all spirits in the atmosphere. That's why it's key to know the word because God does not speak outside of his word. Again, my assignment, pastor, I feel after today, I feel I'm, my assignment is finished. So I'm just going to speak out of my heart. I'm not here to make you run tonight. You know what? That does not impress me anymore. Can I say that? Because I went to Israel, and I watched them. They went back and forth. They don't do much speaking in prayer. I think there comes to a time now we should be mature enough to do more listening than we do talking. Again, I'm just telling you the way I feel. Because if I just do all the talking, how on earth am I going to be changed and for God to do spiritual surgery on me? How many have ever been in surgery? Okay, did they make you talk while you were in surgery? Really? What did they do? Put you on me. That's why where this ark was, when the priest got in there, there was one thing he had to do. First, sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat and then lay, linger, and listen. Lay, linger, and listen. I really believe in this season... I need to hear the voice of God more than anything else. I really believe God is wanting to take us to a level in him where we not only hear his voice, but we will see visions. I believe, I believe we are in that time. This should not be some extraordinary thing. This should be an ordinary thing. Years ago, the Lord gave me a revelation. And I actually have done a little session on it. And it's so important and imperative. Good to see you guys taking notes. It's good. It's good. I, I'm going to go slow because, again, Pastor, I, I'm at this point in my life, I told my husband, I've enjoyed teaching one-on-one -on -one every single day, almost even one week I said to somebody, I'm going to get Saturday off. And all day Saturday I taught. Sunday, Saturday afternoon my pastor called me and said, Sister Cobb, I think I might have COVID. Well, at least he said, I've been sick. I went to the doctors. And I don't think I have it. But they might think so they ran the test. So he said, you'll have to preach for me tomorrow. <laughs> so I did speak at my church one Sunday. But I love to teach. If you will do what we teach, and we're teaching you the word. I always told my students, if I cannot back up what I say by the word, then cross it out. If, you've, if I've ever taught you one-on-one, -on -one, that would be my key thing. If it's not in the word, cross it out. I would like to take you to a very familiar portion of scripture. It's in Matthew chapter 16. And it's, it's, it's Matthew chapter 16. We're going to do the King James Version. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Before I read it, I'd like to give you a little backdrop. Jesus was sitting down with the disciples. And he said, hey, fellas, come around. Come on, you know. Come on, Peter. Come on, all of you. Matthew, come on, Judas, all of you. He said, Let's have a little talk. Let's have a little pal. See, that's why, see, I, I, I don't come here as some well-known evangelist. I'm Jennifer Cobb, right? We, we are all one together. Here's the thing. He said, chaps, come around. Um, who, do you, who do men say that I am? 
They said, oh, man, some say you're a liar. Some say, wow. He said, but can I just be just a little bit honest with you? Who do you say that I am? And they're all saying, man, you know. And all of a sudden, Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, Peter, let's be honest here. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. But he said, but my father in heaven. There are still revelation. Don't settle for just coming to church. It's not the where, it's the who. Don't never come to church because it's the where. You didn't, we, God showed us, it didn't, I'm not against the building. But what, during COVID, one of my students who is now married, he's a youth pastor in New York, we saw his little girl at home speaking in tongues, got the Holy Ghost in her bedroom. Again, it's not the where, it's the whom. He's everywhere. Again, it's great to come to the building. It's important because the Bible says the closer we come to his coming, forsake not the assembly of ourselves. And then Jesus is sitting down there with them and he said, Peter, he said, upon this rock, he said, when he gave him the revelation, when Peter said the revelation, I could see Peter saying, I got it, man. You know, there's always a Peter in the midst. Don't shut them up. They're the loud mouth ones. Like, yeah, I got the question. Yeah. Peter, Peter felt really good and said, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And he, then he said, and the gates of hell is not. He, in fact, he changed his name to, from a little stone to a rock. But the scripture that I really want to um, speak to you about tonight I want to talk to you is where he says, Peter, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Notice this. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This is one of the most misunderstood scripture that I've ever seen in apostolic church. Most everybody prays it wrong. Because again, the remember, these words were written in the Greek and translated by English people in England. So a lot of the translation, the words do not mean what you think they mean. So I come into church, I bind you, devil. Has anybody ever read where anybody bind the devil except in Revelation? Think about it. If you can tell me, I will send you a hundred dollars gift. But yet we come to prayer, I bind you, I bind you. And yet we can't even control our own spirit. How can I bind the king of the kingdom of darkness. Now I can rebuke you. We can all rebuke the demons. I cannot even control the inner me. How can I control the enemy? Think about it. I'm not preaching at you. I'm here to get. We've got to understand the word. It's time to stand up in the authority that God has given to every one of you. Every one of you, don't just say it's all up to Sister God. No, no, no. When he has called you, he has equipped you. And I thank God for the women and the men in here that pray. In, I'm just, keep that scripture up, please. In, and we're not going to go to it, but in Genesis chapter 1. And you can go home and read it, verse 28. Um, the, the Bible says that God says, I give you dominion over the fowls of the air, the fishes of the sea. You all know that scripture, right? That word dominion, I'm going to teach more on it, but not tonight. This is just a little taste of what I'm going to talk about. And the person who actually motivated me to talk on this line was Brother Brian. Because... I have never heard an apostolic UPC preacher ever teach on the kingdom. And when he stood here and was given his testimony, he did something I've never seen. It was skillful. 
He brought in his testimony. Some of it was, I didn't understand half the people you mentioned. <laughs> I didn't come from America, but that's not what, what I thought was beautiful when you brought it into kingdom culture. And I am going to teach on prior to the service on just what is the kingdom of God. Because where you're in a church, it's bigger than a church. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. The Bible says, for he has founded upon the seas. He's established upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Powerful. I serve a king. None can be compared to him. He says, beside me, he says, I know not any other God. That's the God we serve. And even before he, before he became a savior, he was the king. It's such a revelation to know that we know the king of glory took off his beautiful robe of righteousness, comes down in the form of a man and looked at you, Brian, and said, you may have been, you know, abandoned, you thought, at age three, but he put his cloak over righteousness, say, one day I'm going to call out for that young man and I'm going to begin to heal him from age three. Oh, brother, I'm telling you, he had his eyes on you. That's the king of kings. The Bible, David says, and the king of glory shall come in. He said, who is this king of glory? That's the God you serve, apostolic. I am so happy that I'm a child of the king. His royal blood flows through my vein. He doesn't matter what nation you're from. He doesn't care about the color of your skin. He doesn't care whether you're rich or poor. It don't matter. He made them all. And the God, every time you come and you meet in a service, he's there to say, I'm here. I'm here just for you. I'm here. He said, when I was on the cross, Emily, you were on his mind. When he was excruciating pain. When he was in pain, Brother Dyson, he said, I'm going to, it's painful. He said, Father, if it be possible, take this God. But nevertheless, not my will. Why? Because he said, there's a, that Dyson guy, he's going to be born. And I've put into him destiny. It was not put there by man. It was put there by the king. He is king of kings, lord of lords. And Jesus, when he robed in self in flesh, he's meeting them he came on to his own and he was teaching these Jewish men he was rocking their world they knew the Old Testament they understood covenant and he began to say Peter who do and he said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and he said Peter you know what I'm going to do I'm going to give unto you the keys of the kingdom I'm here tonight to tell you Think about this. Keys of the kingdom. He came up. He came here to bring his kingdom on earth. He said the kingdom of God is here. It's not me drink as you suppose, but it's righteousness and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what Acts, the book, Romans says that. We are a children of the king. I am of the commonwealth of heaven. I didn't pay for this. I didn't earn it. His grace and blood bought it. His blood bought it. Grace, that's why grace is the giver of all gifts. And he said, Peter, I give unto you the keys. Let's talk about some keys here. Um, I'm going to, let's look at what keys does, the power of keys. Let's look at that. Could we run the, some of the ladies have helped me here. We're going to look at what the powers of keys Keys, what do they do? Keys represent access. Think about that. Keys represents ownership. Keys represents authority. 
Keys represent authorization. Keys represents power. Keys represents permission. Boy, you didn't know that many, did you? Keys represents freedom, and keys represents control. Let me explain a little bit about it here. Think about it. Some of you might have all these modern gadgets and you just press a number, but let's go back to 10 years ago. And when we go out of our house, we lock the door. And every time my husband said, Jennifer, you got the key? I said, yes, because he said, I don't want, I want to make sure you have the key and I make sure I have the key. Why? Because ain't none of us getting in when we go home if we didn't have the key. If I gave you keys to my house and you went to Cincinnati, Waycross Road, and I gave you the key, are you going to sit out there and just weep and say, I can't get in? And the neighbors say, excuse me, why are you out there? They, well, they gave me the key. They gave me the key. Said, well, open the door. It, does it work? I don't know. She gave me the key. What I did, I gave you access to my house. And the moment you put the key in, opened over the threshold, now you have the ownership in the sense for whatever time a month, whatever ownership. That means you step in. Now, you, can, you might be able to say, you know, I really don't like that chair being there. So while I'm here, I'm going to move it here. You're not seeking to destroy it. But really, you do have the authority to do that right then. You have the authority to use anything in the house. Yes. You can go to the, we have a closet with all the towels. You can take all those big beach towels that my house, and you can use every one of them every day. Why? You've got authority. The neighbors might ring the bell and say, excuse me, I don't know you, but who are you? Say, listen, the cubs gave me the authority to be here. You have been granted access. You've been granted ownership. If you buy a car 10 years ago but without the, again, let's pretend there's no all these automatic stuff. And they give you a key. They said, you've just bought this car or somebody gives you a brand new car. Here's the ownership. Do you just stand there and go, oh, I like the car. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's a car I've prayed for all my life. Okay, okay. Yeah, and you walk around it all day. You said, but... Okay, you got, you got the keys? Come on, hon. Let's drive the car. Come on, come on. Put the key in. Because now you have ownership. You could go and wreck it if you want to. Why? I own this car. I own it. Ownership. Authorization. Key represents power. You can go into, you can do anything in that car. You can play around with the windows all you want. You say, what are you doing? I own it. I can do anything I want. The moon roof, press the way. Yeah, I, I've, I'm, I've own, I own it. Now, permission. When I give you the keys to the house, you have permission. You can sleep. You can choose from all the bedrooms. Choose a bed every night. Why? You, got the, you can do anything you want because you got the keys. Now, if you weren't given the keys and nobody, you know, you don't have access to it, then you don't have permission. Jesus, God says, I gave you power. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by and mean, sir. He said, I'm giving you the key. But the church, we sit down. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it. Oh, God, I know I <laughs> Can I talk to some of the mothers in here? If you have a child out of church, we always pray. Oh, Jesus, do anything to bring them back. Oh, God, whatever it takes. And then something happens bad. You, Jesus, what is it? I'm mad at you. We pray whatever it takes. Be careful what you pray for. Some time it's going to have to take something bad to get in, to get attention from people. But we should be assured that the king can do no wrong. I want to believe that. 
I want to believe that so if my, I only have one child. So God forbid that if Jeremy doesn't want to serve God, that I would say, God. And he might say, Jennifer, do you really mean what it takes? I heard this story. It's an American story about this lady. Her husband wasn't in the church, and she's saying, Pastor, pray for my husband. Then he'll come. And he said, what, Ma, do you want us to really pray? He said, yes. Do you want us to pray whatever it takes? She said, yes, whatever it takes. Well, they were chicken farmers, and they said one night the whole barn burned down, and she, you know, came to church. Her husband came. She's now crying about the barn burning down. He said, well, you say whatever it takes. Do you see what I'm saying? We must understand. God is a God of love. I noticed pastor was emphasizing the holiness of God. That's who he is. And because he's holy, he's love. He can't not, not love. <laughs> because if he doesn't love, then he's not God. He created love. So if you... The fact is God is holy. And you know if you're doing what is right. And if you do what is right and you live right, whatever happens to you, there is a purpose. He's not just going to hit you on the head all the time and all this. stuff, But he's after a relationship. You have to believe that he has your best interest at heart. I was teaching someone about God, and I said, you know, when you come to God, you have no rights. And you think, I've lost everything. The problem is, if I give him all what I think was my rights, you now give him the opportunity. And he's saying, you give me your rights? He said, what you thought was your rights? Wait till you see what I have in store for you. I have better things in store. See, the enemy thinks, I can't give him my all because I'm going to lose everything. We don't really don't understand God. He's got your best interest at heart. You can never outgive God. Can never. The enemy always says, well, if I surrender all, I'm going to lose all. Oh, whoa, no, no, you don't understand. He had better things for you. If I look at my own life, I wanted to be in the Olympics. And the Olympics is so far gone, you, some of the runners you don't even remember. And you practice for four years. And there's only three winners. One is gold, silver, and the rest, you forget about them. But watch this. When I said I'm going to give up sports, I did. I, I had the choice. I gave up sports. People told me, you're a fool. You gave it all up. But I tell you what, compared to what he had for me, I'd give up sports any day. And again, you might say, I, it's, it's not a gain sport. See, back then, as an apostolic, the women had to wear the little skimpy things and all this stuff. And you know, I came to God, and I really did. I'm not saying about sports wrong, but the, the kind of sports I was going to do, it was all me. And, and it, plus, when I got out on the track, I was a different person. My personality was rotten. I thought I was God's gift to mankind. Seriously, you would never know it was me. My, one of my teachers said, they said that's the best thing you could have ever done. They said, you were rotten in your personality. I said, wow, why didn't you tell me? They said, you wouldn't listen. My teacher, my gymnastics teacher told me that. Miss Breeden, she said, that's the best thing you did when you gave up sports. Did you see? I never knew the plan. My God, I, I have traveled, not even about traveling. I have had the times with God in prayer. Nothing can be compared to that. It's a wonderful, wonderful love affair that the God of glory. So again, he said, keys represents all these things. See, keys that God has given is authority, power, access, Freedom, permission, authorization to function in the kingdom of God. He's given all these keys to the church. You can go to prayer. 
and you can begin to pray after repentance and God will say that the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you begin to speak in tongues and sometimes it's warfare tongues you don't realize the power and the authority you are speaking to the atmosphere that the demonic system is pulling back and you don't even know that that's power he said when I fill it with the Holy Ghost I put power in you you have been, if you can speak in tongues, you have power. Amen. Just think about that. It's like somebody gave, see we can understand that sort of power. If it's a big mansion and I give you the keys, you'll walk around, you say, I can sleep in any room. I can even burn down the house if I want. It's my, it's my, do you see what I'm saying? But he's all, he's saying, I've given you greater power than that in earth's atmosphere. What, so he said, Peter, whatever you bind on earth, Peter, I'm giving to the church. I'm granting them ownership. I'm granting them the, the, the keys to my power, my authority. That's why when you read even about the armor of God, it's telling the church, you don't have to be beaten up by your past. He said, I behold, I have given you keys to walk and to live above sin. You are not an illegitimate child. They called it a bad word, a bastard. No, you are joint ears, Romans said, with Christ. But sister, oh, they tell me I could. No, you look at the devil and says, I can do all things. How can you do it? Through Christ. How can you do that? He infuses you. He gives you the power. You've got to believe that. This is nothing new. You've heard it before. He took this one step further. Let's go to the next slide. He said, Peter. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. The word bind in the Greek means this. To undergird. To, to heal. To hold. To persuade. To steady. To cause fragmented pieces. To come back into one whole. To put oneself self under obligation and cling to brother brian i'm gonna pick on you tonight but what i thought about this when it was the word bind he said when i came by you know it's like, it's like the scripture in ezekiel the world was saying he's hopeless he's hopeless but god looked at you and said live Amen. your life was broken pieces and he said, watch this. I'm going to bind it back together again. In other words, I'm going to pick up the broken pieces like a jigsaw puzzle. And I'm going to make him a whole man. Dare you walk around with your head down. Dare you live in condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That's why the world comes after us. To destroy us because they know what God has given to the church. Not for you to boast about, but it's to be activated for the greatness, for the work of his kingdom. See, it's all about the king and the kingdom. That's why the enemy comes and pushes you and messes with your mind. No, you, there are times I, I had to hold my mind. And the enemy would laugh at me and said, put yourself with all these other speakers. You didn't even go to Bible school. And I was listening, Sister Kiosha, to those negative voices. See, we, we come and we, we dance and it's good to dance. But when you go home and the voices begin to speak to you, you got to pick up the key and says, no, I refuse to live into this. I'm a child of the king. You got to speak to it. You got to open your mouth and say, I'm going to use the authority. No, you can't mess with me. No, if simple fishermen can turn the world upside down, inside out, they didn't have cell phones. They walked and they taught the word of God, and the word of God grew. 
Oh, if the church in this season would believe the word. It's time when we come to church, we come to prayer meetings, we come to play music. You say, Sister Kiosha, the Lord spoke me to me today. I want to share a revelation from the word. It's time we come together and speak the word, use the authorization, use the keys. Instead, sometimes we just, it's, it's not wrong to share your negative, but come on. Some of the worship singers, I want to encourage you. It's not nice to not have, to, to have fun. It's right. But come on, how many times you ever come and said, hey, bro, I got this revelation. Can I share it with you? It could be the very thing that saves that singer's life. But it's end of God, it's end of services for these performance. God is not impressed any longer. Sing all you want, play all you want. It's beautiful, don't stop it. But play and sing to the one. Use the keys that he gave to you. If you're going to play, play songs to him. Make a melody in your heart. Something. I'm speaking that for myself. Don't just turn it back on when you come into the building. I believe God allowed the shutdown. Because if I couldn't pray in my house, it's a red light right there. It's a red light. Shall I tell you why? This was not even in my notes. The Lord said to just remind you. Jesus had died on a cross. You know that. He had been crucified. He was put in a tomb. The disciples knew he was in the garden. Early that morning, you can read in the book of John when you go home, they all came, just a few of them. But there were a couple of women. One of them was Mary. Mary, the one that had been delivered. Mary, the one that Christ had done much for. And when they came to the tomb, they saw the tomb empty. They came, to, the Bible says, when they came to the place. And the disciples saw it empty. I'm not preaching against them. I probably would have left. But one woman says, you know what? It's not the place. I, I had to come to the place to find the whom. But when the whom wasn't here, I ain't leaving the place. Because see, it wasn't the place I had to come. But what I really wanted was the whom. So she said, everybody went home. She said, I ain't leaving. So she began to walk around the garden. And I've been to the garden in it, in, over in Jerusalem. And it's not that large of a garden. And she's just walking around and she's weeping. She is weeping because she wants the who. She wants the king. And the king is not there. She is so broken because it's not the place that's going to save her. It's the master. She found him. Yes. That's what the church, that's what the world want. They want the king because it's only the king that put their lives together again. Whatever you bind on earth, you just pray and you be healed. The word to bind means to heal. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Sister Dyson, come here, please. This was not in my thing, and I know COVID, I promise you, as far as I know, I don't have it. But today, just give one minute of what one happened. Minute. One minute. So today, um, I was at um, Mama Rogers' house with, with Sister Cobb, and um, we just started to pray. And um, some of you know I've been having all these dental problems um, in the last month, and I was told that my gum on this side is so bad that it would take 18 to 24 months to heal. So since March, whenever I eat anything or drink anything, I'm in excruciating pain. When they worked on it, um, it was more painful than any of my labors. So it is, it's very, very painful. Um, but today, while we were praying, um, well, I'm out of order, but he healed my gum. And the reason I know he healed it is because I was drinking lukewarm water, and all of a sudden I'm like, wait a minute, it, does, it doesn't hurt. Sister Cobb was talking about when you're, at the moment that she was saying, 
holiness, there's a complete healing that comes when you have holiness. And as she was saying that, yes, I was filling up the water bottle with ice cold water. And I said, when I drink this, it's not going to hurt. Because the lukewarm didn't hurt, but I'm going to try it with the cold. And I drank cold water, and there was zero pain. So God healed this. That was, praise God, that was actually the second healing. The first healing was we were praying, and I, I told my husband, and I'm just falling apart. I'm 47. I, I've never had to go to the chiropractor doctor, and I just had this shoulder pain. Um, and while we were praying, Sister Cobb started, said, the Lord, she came behind me. Because I don't go in the front. Yeah. And she was, she was saying, though, she said the word shoulder like three times, and I'm like, oh, God, you're telling her about my shoulder. And all of a sudden, I just raised my shoulder, and it usually makes this grinding pop sound like, J.D. knows, he's heard it. My kids have heard it before. It makes these loud noises because, anyway, I raised it, and the sound was gone, and I was like this, and he healed my shoulder. That was the first, that was the first healing. Um, and then he healed my gum. So I told Sister Cobb, I woke up this morning just thinking it was an ordinary day, and then, like she said, there was just, a, Mama was there. It was such a powerful just presence of God. Like we couldn't stop praying. It was just beautiful. He said, Peter, the authority I'm going to give to you, you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The beautiful thing about God's holiness is you don't have to beg him. When worship comes in, his glory comes to. And the holiness, you know why I know this? It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who redeemeth our life no 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 that's verse three who who will it all my diseases i believe there's one who forgives all my iniquities that's it who forgives all my iniquities and who healeth all my disease he said when my holiness comes in because in holiness there is no contamination and when you are sick your body is contaminated so when holiness comes over you sickness has to flay it cannot be it eradicates any sickness holiness is pure holiness when he overshadows you, if there's even, that's why repentance is so key in our lives. When you repent, you don't have to beg him. You just say, God, against you and you have I sinned. And I've done this evil in your sight. And say, God, by your mighty hand, I'll not do it again. And suddenly you begin to look up to him. He's, the Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My health cometh from, my help cometh from the Lord, which Make heaven and earth. Sister, that word help is the same as ezekinegdo. My ezekinegdo come from God. He's my warrior. Why does it come? Because he is the Lord of hosts. Oh, hallelujah. Because of his holiness. That's why when the Lord of hosts shows up, his holiness shows up. Because his holiness and the fact that he's the Lord of hosts is the same. That's why sin cannot stand in the presence of holiness. His holiness is pure. And if your body, my knee hurts, that means something has contaminated my body. So the more I worship and his holiness comes around, oh my God, the holiness... Oh, if you don't believe me, just read the Bible. The children of Israel that left Egypt and walked in the desert for 40 years, they walked under a glory cloud. They walked under the holiness of God. Their shoes did not wear out. My God, their feet didn't swell. They didn't need new clothes. That's the power of God's holiness. And the king of glory shall come. The Bible says the angels cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty, which was, 
your past which is today and which is to come the same scripture as in as in Hebrews 13 Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever he said Peter I give to you the keys I give it to the church I give it to the church at POW and I tell them I equip them with power I've authorized them to go into territories and say demons back off That's the word. Moses said to the children of Israel, children, I'm going to die. I'm going the way of all men. But he said, when I leave, cling to Jehovah. Bind yourself to Jehovah. Bind yourself to him. Bind yourself. Sister, and would you, you're 10 minutes. Okay, let me see. Okay, come on out here real quickly. You're from the same household. Come on. Come on here, mama. I want you to lock arms like together. They're together. They're together. <laughs> She's a smile. It's beautiful. What he's saying, no matter what, if, she, if you, you try to go one way, but don't let her. See? Keep going. Turn. Keep. See? She's clinging. Because sometimes the enemy is drawing you one way. But Jesus is holding you. Say, no, 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 no. Follow me. You say, but Jesus, I don't want to go that way. He said, just follow me. I have better things for you. You can't even come up with the blessings I have for you. He's saying, you don't understand. The enemy is saying, you lose. No, you win. You win every time. If you can grasp the message of holiness his love is pure brother Brian his love is pure that's why when you talk about kingdom culture when you know the king Mary walked that garden and she was broken because the who was not in the tomb she didn't care about the place she was desperate because she wanted the holiness of his presence and watch this she's crying and the man, she saw the man supposing it was the gardener. She said, tell me, where have you laid him? She was so in love with the king. Regardless if he was going to bless her or not, she didn't care for bless. She just wanted his presence. And she never even had the Holy Ghost. My God, we have the Holy Ghost. I'm here to encourage you all. And what she did was, the, the, the voice said, Mary. She said, Rabboni. Ah, she, was, she said, don't touch me. And it wasn't COVID-19. She said, don't touch me. He said, wait, you can't touch me. It's almost like, if it's, isn't that something, Pastor? It's almost like his body was glorified. See, when, he's in, when he was in that state, it was so pure. He said, don't touch me because holiness is pure. You think that's why the same holiness that can love you is the same holiness that will kill you. You've got to get it. It's so pure. It's so pure. That the very presence can't take sin. That's why he said if you sin, just ask for forgiveness and you can come right in my presence. That's why repentance is key. It's key. It's key. But here's the thing. We've all come from some jacked up family background. And you keep having to say, I'm sorry, mommy. I'm sorry, daddy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And everyone said, daddy left because they, he didn't love you. And you're, oh, God, I'm sorry. I've been bad. I've been bad. And we come to God with this whole mentality. He said, Peter, you got to get rid of this, Peter. I'm giving to you keys of authority of access into the divine, into the kingdom. Peter used them. That's why on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Peter stood up and said, this is that which was spoken by the, that was power. That was authority. That 
was authority. You've been given that authority. That's what it means, cling to, hold. It didn't mean to bind up, tangle up. There's another binding about binding the strong man. That's a whole different um, in the context, those that teach talks about context clues of certain words. Okay, people always say, well, what does this one mean? We're not talking about, we're talking about this binding. Whatever you bind on earth. Sister, when you step out, you remember that day you stepped out of the building or you were walking and you looked up and there was a black cloud. God is saying there's a black cloud over this city. And the moment you, you begin to see the cloud break, he's saying, speak it. Speak it. When you feel like you're going to lose it with him, steady and say, God, steady me by your word. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the house of the... Come on, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie. He, he, he. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. His word is true because the moment it becomes untrue, he ceased to be holy. You see that? The binding goes like this. It's to be clung to. Here's one of the secrets. There's a scripture. In Isaiah 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40 is a fabulous chapter. It speaks about the sovereignty of God. It tells you how great God is. I love it. But at the very end, he talks about the young man shall run and they shall be weary. But the, the, the last verse, said, the verse that it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word wait does not mean to sit down and wait. I've said that in the church before. The Lord said, but they need to hear it again. It's not that I'm sitting down and waiting on God. There are scriptures where it says wait on God. But in the original text, this word means to be intertwined. You know how you braid someone's hair? You take three strands and it becomes one big cord. They that are intertwined with God. What does that mean? It's something like this. Go in front of your mom. Okay. No, go in front. Let go. Let go. Okay. I don't know if this is going to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Intertwined, you're connected. You're connected. So now, like an eagle picks up the baby, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. How shall you renew their strength? Because they're so close to one another. And because God, the strength of the holiness of God now begins to permeate to you and begins to change you. So when you are weak, because he is strong, you automatically become strong. That's why prayer is one of the greatest keys that God's given to the church. Because when you go to prayer and you begin to praise and worship him, his power, his very presence now begins to permeate. That is why. When Moses went up into the mount, he spent so long in his presence. God's brightness was like, what, what is that thing I use? It's, what was the term I used? It's like um, something that can permeate your body. Radiation. It's like radiation. So when he came down, they didn't have to turn the lights off because he shone so bright. Why? The glory of God permeate into Moses. So when they saw the people said, you got to wear a veil. Because when you get in his presence, in seeing him, you become like him. 
So they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Why? Because if you're riding, the baby rides on the back of the eagle. And they soar to such great the Bible says in Joel, now let the weak say, I am strong. Why? Because you are so clinging to Jehovah. You are being, you, you, are, you have come to him in prayer. You are allowing him to wrap his arms around you. It's the scripture of Psalms 91. He that is enthroned in the presence of Jehovah, you can't help be protected by Jehovah. Now. It's not the Lord's will for her to come over here, but this is where this is where teenagers go. Come on over here, baby. No, don't let her come. Okay, I'm the devil. So the Lord is saying, "You're the Lord. I'm the no, I'm the evil one." Come on over. Come on over. The party's good. Come on. You know what they talk of that P.O.W. They don't know what they talk. Come on, sweetheart. Just they won't know. They won't know. And the Lord holds her because see, in the time of temptation. He'll hide you in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide you. He shall set you up upon a rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. He's the only one. He's got you. It's impossible for God to lie. Because the moment he lies, he becomes corrupt. And he's no longer holy. His very essence is holiness. You are. You're bound. Through prayer. Thank you. Through the word. Now look at the other one. Whatever you bind on earth, Peter, shall be bound in heaven. The authority, Brother Mark. The authority. But let me just say this. It's key to live a repentant life. Because the enemy, okay, do we have a few more minutes? I didn't even time it. Listen to this. I'm going to be totally transparent. About three weeks ago, the Lord reminded me of a type of prayer that I learned years ago. Well, five or six years ago. And it's talking about the throne room, being a courtroom. And I was, the Lord, I got down my knees and was praying. And the Lord said, I want you to repent right now. I thought, repent? He said, yes. And as I knelt, I have never experienced this in my life. It was like I was in a trance, and I saw myself. Got to be careful. I won't say the place because people are, will pick up where it was and who the speaker was. I was doing a large ladies' conference in another area of the country. It was the state. So usually the, you've gone to your Wisconsin state. Some of these states, there's over a 1,000 people there, the largest state. And it was so big, the services were long, they brought in two speakers. I was one, and there was another woman. Well, they didn't have any people on the platform. It was, it was in a big hotel because there was such a large the group. I remember sitting over here on the front row, and the Lord began to show that to me. The person that was preaching that night, I realized, didn't like me. And so what I did was, I shied away from them. I didn't really want to talk to them. And I'm not going to go to all the details because I don't want people to know who it was. I won't. And it bothered me throughout the conference. It, it hurt. It was very hurtful, but it made me be very reclusive. You, you ever been down that road? And I'm praying, I'm on my knees and God is showing me other, and I'm telling you, it was real as the day it was happening. And I'm watching it like a movie. And then I saw myself the last day of the conference. This is, I was on my knees in prayer and I wasn't sleeping. And I see myself get in the car for the driver that came to pick me up to take me to the airport. Suddenly, the other speaker came to the car. I guess she saw me in the back seat, so she ran in the front. And I'm promising you, I have never felt this insignificant in my life. She, they sat in that front seat and they talked all the way to the airport. They did not even include me in their conversation. It was hurtful. 
When we got to the airport, I couldn't believe it. She got up, did not even say hi, dog. Bye, dog. That's what we say in England. At least you'd say to the dog, bye, little Zacky Poo. Or, you know, doggy here did not even get by. Okay? So I was greatly offended. When I got home, it began to really hurt. So what I did was, I knew this was going to a very dangerous place with me. So what I did was, I began to forgive. I went through forgiveness. I did. Because I, and you know how I know I've forgiven them? Because I've been places where the person's name has been spoken. And I said, not a word. Some A church has even asked me, what do I think of this person? They're going to think of bringing them in. Not a word. But the Lord said, you have you know where I'm going with this? Lord said, you did forgive her. But he said, the problem was, you were wrong. And you never repented of it. Let me explain something to you. God showed me, and I know the scripture. It's from Revelation chapter 12. That the enemy literally comes to the throne room and says, do you remember this date, God? This is what God was playing it back. She refuse to she be, she treated that woman with disdain see i thought i was the i was the guilty we were both guilty but god said you never asked for forgiveness because you could have at least go up and say praise the lord so and so you know i'm praying for you oh no because i knew they didn't like me i pulled away he said you must repent now watch this this was about three four weeks ago the moment i repent I'll never forget it. It was like the heavens opened. And let me just say this. When God was showing me this, that I did wrong, I never felt pain. And I never felt like I was a bad girl. No, because the scripture, there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. He's saying, I'm giving you the, the blessing of for, to, to ask for forgiveness. It's a gift. Repentance is a gift of his, it's an attribute of his holiness. He's saying, I'm giving you the gift of repentance because he said, I'm holy and I want you to repent so you can come into my presence. That's why repentance. You thought it, no, it's a gift. He's saying, come on, come on, Emily. Just, could you just repent? Why, God? Because you see, my holiness will kill you. Because holiness is so whole. It, it, it will kill. Because holiness cannot be contaminated. So the moment I ask for forgiveness, oh my God, I went into God's presence. Now watch this. The Lord said, I, immediately I began to hear the voice of the Lord. He said, I want you to write every church starting in California that you've been to, to Mexico and all across to the East Coast. I began to write the names and he said, you are going to start interceding for every pastor. And as I begin to pray, and I'm coming down the coast from Oregon, coming down to California, I'm going to San Diego, down to Mexico. I'm going and I'm coming across. The Lord stopped me. He said, this one pastor in California, you got to get in touch with them. They need to know that I burdened you for them. I sent a text to his wife. I said, I, I, I just going to tell you, the Lord told me, to let you know that I spent the time on my needs interceding for him. And the wife said that. She said, Sister Cobb, if you only know what we're going through. What did I do? It gave them hope in the midst of a horrible storm. They did call me later to tell me the me it was horrible. He said, why did he have to have me? I'll prove it to you. Again, this was not in my notes. Isaiah 6 verse 1. You don't have to pull it up. The Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the law seated on his throne, high lifted up. Okay? And the Bible talks about the seraphims were flying in the throne room. Isaiah. And Isaiah saw the seraphim with twain that did fly. And they were saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And he said, when Isaiah... Saw the holiness of God. 
He said, woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips. Holiness shows you where you've gone wrong. Not to crucify you, but to give you the gift of repentance. There was no condemnation in that. And, and he said, Isaiah said, for I dwell in the midst of unclean people. Brother, you're right. <laughs> Learned about the holiness of God. Is this. He begs us to repent. He begs us to be holy. He said, because the holy you become, you're becoming like me. You have divine access. But he's trying to see the devil says, repentance is condemnation. It is not. It's a gift. It's a gift from a holy God. Come on, open your mouth. Come on. Uh, no, it's a gift. It's a gift. My God. My God. The enemy is lying to someone and says, you've been a bad girl, a bad guy. No, he's saying, I'm giving you the gift. But the church of the living God is living under condemnation. He's saying, repent. Yes. He's, he's saying, hurry up and repent. Come into my presence. Yes, you've been given the gift of repentance. That's it. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, Akosho. I come against every negative thought tonight. God is saying what you thought was a punishment. It's my gift of entrance into the holy of holies. I want your desire. I want you in my holiness. But my very holiness will kill us if we do not repent. But God, I haven't done anything wrong. Come on. Some of us have been battling with our past. I can't live up to this one. No, you don't have to live up to anybody except the Lord God. Oh, Hayako Son. Come on, come on. That's the gift. You've been given one of the keys, yes. Mako shonto sayando. That's why Peter said, repent every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, remember he said, and ye shall receive power, power, power. That's it. That's it. God is speaking to you. It's not condemnation. Come on. 
Ah, it's a gift of a million dollars, Marco Shonto Man. That's it, Kyosha. Ah, Kyondo Manta. Saya Kyondo Manta. Sanda Mando Ikiodolomomo Santa. Yo Manda Ikiodolomo Santo. That's it, church. That's it. From a holy God, a very personal God. He said, For I've loved you with an everlasting love. Love. Therefore, with loving kindness, see loving kindness, I draw you to myself. Nobody can stop you from getting, that's it, my gosh. Some of you are getting the revelation in your spirit right now. You're getting the revelation. Yes, I caution. Ah, kiondo manta. Saya kiondo. That's why David said, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Renew in me a right spirit. Ah, that's it it's a gift from a holy God he said my holiness is pure that's it come on you're breaking through yes he's giving you the keys that's it sister Cruz the enemy That's it, Brother Brian. Come on. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. You know that he's giving you the keys to the kingdom. That's it, Kiosha. You have yet to come on, go into. Yes, come on. He is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Emily, that's it. It's a breakthrough that God. Everything of negative that has been spoken against you, I cancel. I take authority. Maya koshon tomanta. That's it, sweetheart. God, that you will open her ears, Lord God, that sometimes she's be lesser than. Father God, we plead the blood. We plead the blood of the Lord Jesus. Maya koshon. Yes, come on. Yes, come on. Ah, the gift, the gift, that's it. You've been given, Sister Cruz. Your woman, come on. Yes. That's it. Yes. Nobody can stop you. That's it, Sister Yesenia. That's it, Makoshon. Yes. Ah, uh, creating me a king. That's it, Brother Ryan. Ah, Kiondo Manta. Ah, the great gift of repentance. Maya Kiondo Manta. Come on, sister, back there. That's it. Come on. Yes, all over. That's it. For the Quran, you've not yet been to places. Come on. It's a breakthrough. I know you're doing the camera. It's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. Maya Cole. That's it, sister. You're beautiful. My gosh, that's it, Sister Carpenter. No, come on. The word of the Lord is alive in you. That's it, Sister Constant. Back there, come on. It's a breakthrough. It's a press. You've been given the authority. You've been the gift. That's it. That's it. That's it. My caution. That's it, Brother Marcus. It's a pressing. That's it, Brother Stevie. Ah, uh, it's a newer dimension. Yo, Manta. That's it, Pastor. New dimension. Ah, Kiondo. Shanda. That's it. God is in the house. I wonder who. That's it. Come on, it's a press, a press. That's it, come on. 
That's it. In the spirit, some of you, I see you going, saying like me, Rabboni. That's it, brother Uriah. There is such a depth. Ah, key. Oh, no. That's it, Brother Dyson. The God is taking you in this season. Yes, yes, I can. Koshonto, Sayando Manta, Kosha, don't stop. No, there is so much more of God. Only you can break through. Pick up the gift of repentance. Don't beg him. Now enter. That's it. Mina, that's it. Come on, come on. That's it. You can press. You're pressing. That's it. That's it. Mina, yes, deeper. Ryan, keep going. Yes. God's holiness is filling this place. Come on. That's it. That's it. Tears are a language God understands. That's it. It's a gift. It's a gift. You have been given the keys. Ah, Kiondo, I authorize you to walk in it. Use the keys. Ah, Kosh. That's it, brother Uriah. My God, God is challenging you tonight. There's a place in me, he said. Moses, there's a place in me. Come on, come on, it's a press. Come on, it's God's holiness. That's all you need is holiness heals. Ah, his holiness delivers. His holiness delivers. Machiondo. That's it. That's it, Asia. Makosh. Mayando Makosh. Yes. I see many of you. You are going into the Holy of Holies. Ah, Kiondo. That's it. That's why Paul says, I do the present. That's it, Brother Cruz. God has pr protected you. God has preserved you, Brother Cruz. It's his holiness. It's his holiness. That's it, Brother Brian. Every unbelief, come on, cast it out. Your past, he's Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Makiondo mantaya. Ah, yando, mayando. That's it. That's it. I see the come on the Shekinah go. Ah, yando, man. That's it, come on. There is such a, God is moving. His holiness, come on, it brings deliverance. Come on, if there's any doubt in your mind of the struggles, press, come on. That's it, Elijah, that's it. Mina, there's a deeper. Machion, every doubt, every fear. He said, I take your imperfections. 
sometimes your fear of not living will hinder you. It's over. That condemnation, His holiness, removes it from our mind. Stevie there you thought that some people would have thought you wouldn't make it but come on there's more Stevie God birthed in you that prayer the prophetic prayer he said there's more Stevie Makiondo come on Akoshonto manto, sayando manto, maya kosh. Ah, that's it. They were gathered in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind. The people, yes, come on, begin, continue to open your mouth. Ah, kiondo. Shayando Manta, I will not be satisfied till I rise in your presence. I will not be satisfied. Zakoshonto Manta Yaki. That's it, Quran. You're using the keys. Maya Kosh. That's it. That's it. That's it, Mama Rogers. That's it. The fountain of living water is here. That's it. Come on, Kyosha, the fountain of living water. Ah, Kiyondo, Manta, Ya, Kiyoko, Santa. Hallelujah. 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 For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Shayando sunt. The Bible said when they cried in the throne room, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Oh, the whole earth is full of thy glory. Some of them in the book of Revelation, they cast their crowns down at their feet and they bowed on their knees because he's holy. He is pure. His love for you is holy. His love for you is pure. Makoshonto Sayando Manta. That city's not finished yet. Come on. Makoshonto. No one is exempt from the glory of God, the Holy. Akiondo Manta Shayando Manta. Come on, yes, holy, the whole earth is full. Shanda. Shayando. Sayaki. That's it. Come on. Don't let your mind wander. This is holy place. You are standing, you are on holy ground. Holy ground, holy ground, holy ground, holy ground, because holy ground, that's where it is. 
That's why he said, Moses, you're on holy ground. Take off your shoe from off your feet for the place you stand. He is holy. He cannot be anything else but holy. He cannot be anything else but love. Oh, love of God. How rich and pure, how measureless and strong. Sanda mando ikionto. Ayako shoto mante. Mayando ikionto. Ayako shoto. That's it, Mama. That's right back there. Mama Marone, that's it. That's it. That's it. Come on, begin to speak in tongues. That's it. That's it. Maya Koshoto. God preserved you. Yes, His holiness preserves. His holiness delivers. Maya Koshot. He said, Peter, whatever you bind on earth, Makosh. Why? Ah, because His holiness shows up in worship. I Sayako. Ah, God is challenging. Manda Makosho Ayandoso Makosho Ayako Anda Mando Siando Manta Hi Ayako Sayando Manta Akioto Shayako Maya Kosho, Maya Ndoso, Makosho, Sayako, come on, come on, come on, he's here. That's it. That's why the shepherdess in the Song of Solomon said, when I found him, I would not let him go. Makoshonto. She said, for he's altogether lovely. Sando mantayakio. Because he's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He's the lover of my soul. He picked He plant my feet. <laughs> Greater love hath no man than this, than a man laid down his life for his friend. <laughs> and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lift them up, ye everlasting doors. Oh, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keeps but Israel does not slumber. He does not sleep. Oh, Shanda, Mando, Sioko, Manta, Sayaki, Ondo, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing, one thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Oh my goodness, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple, for in the time of trouble he shall hide me. Oh God, 
kosto hayandoso nakiondo hayando mm akosho Oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh Lord, our God, how majestic is your name. When I consider the works of your fingers, the sun, the moon, and the star, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him. Lord, oh Lord, how excellent, how majestic is your name. Mando soto, sayakiondo manta, sando manta, hallelujah. Mako, that's it. There's such a smith. There's peace. Keep your minds up. Let him talk to you in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide you? Yes, he shall set you upon high. What's it say? Holiness preserve you. Yes. Mayando, what a God we serve. None like you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> he healeth all our diseases, my God. He cleanses me from all unrighteousness. His presence is heaven to me. Sayando manda yakioto. So manda. Yo
feel like the Lord is probing right now. And as we yield our thoughts, our wills, I feel like there is a a supercharge of his holiness presence just wants to invade our personality, our character. As we allow him to probe those conversations we may have had, those situations, perhaps past experiences, God is, I'm probing it so that, can my holiness come? Can it invade that part of your consciousness? Will you just release your passion back? Because whatever he brings to light, he causes, he creates a solution to, he creates a transformation for. And as you yield and yourself to this, this love, this supercharge, that's what he's calling it, he, 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 he'll rearrange the past. He'll heal that particular area as he's probing. That's why Isaiah said that tongues, the coals he put on my lips, I let him probe me. And I wasn't just going to leave the atmosphere with a dirty mouth. I'm leaving the atmosphere with something's changed in my spirit towards that wrong situation, that, that, that thing that has plagued me for years. He's probing right now. He's probing. Would you let the angel put some coals on your tongue right now, on your lips right now? He can just one, one second, one presence, one second in the presence of holiness can undo 10 years of molestation. I said one second in his presence. If you let him probe you, it'll do more than 30 years of a wrong situation. Holiness makes you naked. It makes you naked. It makes you bare. God, wherever you want to go in the crevices of the place of my house right now, you have permission to go. Search me. See if there be any wicked thing in me. But it's not just looking for that. He's looking for, he's looking to download parts of his character in us. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. There's a wave. There's a wave trying to come here. If you let it, just let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. I feel somebody's trying to burst something out of you. It's been an oppression for a long time. You just let it come out of you. Travail and birth until Christ is formed. can probe my heart any way you want, God. I just want to be like you. I just want you. I just want you. I just want you. Just want you. 
Help us. I will think like God. I will think like God. I will act like God. I will perceive like God. Yeah, I got to look at my picture. Okay, yeah, 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 Let the atmosphere of your probing presence push back mental insanity, offenses, deceptions, seductions. Come on, if Saul's javelin couldn't kill David, Satan's arrows can't destroy you. The holiness of David kept Saul's javelin from killing him. I wish somebody started declaring some things. You need to learn how to declare. To claim them. Start thanking. Claim them. Claim them. Claim them. Claim them. Come on. Start declaring. I declare it. I declare it. I declare it. I'm not fighting to be holy. I claim your holiness. Make it a little bit of 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 a little